Hello students, in our previous class, we have discussed about health, disease, personal health and community health. Now today, I am going to teach you something more about disease okay, and types of disease and its causes. Now, in our last class, you came to know that disease means what? Disease means any disturbance in our normal body functioning. Now, our normal body functioning is carried out by what? Is carried out by different organ systems that I have discussed in my previous class. Okay, that is what? That our normal body functioning mainly depends on different organ system so any disturbance in functioning of our organ system it may be digestive system respiratory system any system ultimately will lead to what will lead to disease is it clear so what i have said that any disturbance in functioning of our organ system will lead to disease that means disease is the result of changes changes in our body systems but these changes are for worse that means it will bring disturbance the type of changes will bring what disturbance and discomfort now here one thing I want to say that all of us we have suffered from disease that you will agree with me it may be a minor disease but we have experienced so I think that this disease it may be a minor fever cold and cough okay so all of us we have experienced disease. Now you will find that whenever there is some disease, there will be what? There will be some changes in your body. Some discomfort. Now these changes which occurs in your body when you suffer from some disease, you can feel you can feel it you can see it okay sometimes like it may be pain which will occur it may be some swellings in some body parts like that okay so these are the changes some of it you can feel and some you can see so these changes or I can say the sign which you will see which you will feel Okay, we can call it as what? We can call it as symptoms. Now, this is one important term you will have to keep in mind that symptoms. So, what are symptoms? These are the signs which arise due to changes in your body. And the changes which will bring disturbance or discomfort in your body functioning. We can give some examples of such symptoms which also they have mentioned in your textbook. Like some simple symptoms, maybe we can say headache, cough, loose motion, etc. So these are some common symptoms we see when we some suffer from a particular type of disease. Now here, one important thing to know is that symptoms will help us to know that there is a disease. So how you come to know that you are suffering from a disease? So when you see the symptoms, that means what? Symptoms means the changes in your normal body condition or body functioning. Okay, so symptoms will help us to know 
that there is a disease. But symptoms will not help us to know what the disease is. Simply by looking at the symptom, you cannot pinpoint the particular type of disease. That means we can say that symptoms do not indicate what the disease is. A simple example they have given in your textbook is that they have given that headache does not mean that you have meningitis. Now what is meningitis? It is the infection of meninges. Meninges, these are three, there are three layers of meninges which covers our brain. So the three layers which covers our brain, we call it as meninges. So infection of these three layers or infection of these meninges is known as meningitis. Okay, so here they are saying that if you have headache, it does not mean that you have meningitis. Why? Because it may be simply because of examination fear. The headache may also arise if you are in, you know, pressure, in tension. Maybe it may be because of examination. At that time also, headache may occur. So headache it will not mean that you are suffering from a particular type of disease, for example, like meningitis or brain tumor, something like that. So it may be because of some simple reason. So here, by this example, what we can say that symptoms will not indicate what the disease is. Okay, is it clear? But symptom is one important thing, mainly for the physicians or doctors. Now why we will see that? Because physicians or doctors, in order to get some idea about the disease, they always look for what? Look for symptoms. Because symptoms will give us the idea about what? About the presence of a disease. Okay? So you also, you have realized or maybe you have experienced, all of us we have experienced that whenever we visit a doctor, they always first ask for what? For the symptoms. They always look for symptoms. They ask us, what happens? What is your problem? So what they do? They ask about symptoms because simply by knowing the symptoms, they can get the idea about the disease. Just the idea. But they cannot indicate what particular disease the patient is suffering from. But simply they will get the idea about the presence of the disease. Now, when doctor will specify the particular disease, they can specify the particular disease after doing some tests, laboratory tests, in order to pinpoint the disease. So when they will do some tests in the laboratory, when they will diagnose it, then only they can pinpoint okay what the disease is so this again i am repeating the symptoms are the sign of diseases but symptoms cannot specify the particular disease okay okay now we will discuss Types of diseases. There are different types of diseases, but diseases we can categorize into two main categories. One is 
acute disease and the other one is chronic. So there are how many types of diseases? Two types. Acute disease and chronic disease. Now what is the difference between these two types of disease? So acute disease means what? The disease which lasts for a short period of time. It will last for few days. Which type of disease? Acute disease. For example, they have given in your book like common cold which lasts for few days. Okay? So, this type of diseases which last for few days, we can call it as what? Acute disease. But, there are some diseases like tuberculosis, elephantiasis. Now, this type of disease will last for a longer period of time, maybe for the whole life. So, this type of diseases, okay, which last for a long period of time, we call it as what? Chronic disease. Okay? So, acute disease lasts for shorter period of time, whereas chronic disease lasts for a longer period of time. So, this is the basic difference between these two type of disease. Okay, now we'll have to discuss that which type of disease is going to affect us more, either it is acute or chronic. Now, if you have understood the difference between acute and chronic disease, then you will be able to think which one is going to affect us more. Is it not? So, which one is going to affect us more? The one which lasts for a longer period of time. That is chronic disease. Okay? So, chronic disease will have more effect okay, on us. It is not acute disease. Now, why? Let us discuss this. Now, see, when one suffers from chronic disease, it will last for a long period of time. And we know from the previous class that all our body systems are what are interconnected all our body systems organ systems we have discussed i have discussed in the previous class that they are all interconnected with each other and if any one organ system is not functioning properly then surely it is going to affect the other Okay, so because all the organ systems, they are interconnected. So if one organ is not functioning properly, the other organ will also be affected. In simple words, I can say that when disease lasts for long period of time, it will lead to side effects. So that is, I think, it is making it clear that disease lasting for a longer period of time will have what? Will have side effect. This you know. The side effects of a particular type of disease. But in case of acute disease, this does not happen. Okay? That means what? That means in acute disease, there is no chance of side effects because it lasts only for a shorter period of time. 
okay so when we suffer from acute disease we recover from the disease okay within a short time okay and also you'll find one thing that when we suffer from chronic disease it will hamper our normal daily activities for a long time which will not happen in case of acute disease is it not because when we suffer from when you suffer from chronic disease your daily routine will be disturbed you will not be able to study regularly not be able to go to school we will not be able to do our work our job is it not and if parents are suffering from chronic disease they will not be able to take care of their children so what will happen along with physical disturbance there will be mental disturbance also and also when parents are suffering from chronic disease the children will also become unhappy dissatisfied is it not and also we can say that not only the person who is suffering from chronic disease will be affected but also his or her family members the other members in the family will also become unhappy because if one suffers from a disease every day we see in front of our eyes then the other members will also become what become mentally disturbed and there what there will be mental disturbance so now we can say that chronic disease leads to poor health so now again we are coming to this particular term health which is having a broad meaning as in our last class we have said health means what it is the well being of physical mental and social okay state of well being of physical mental and social so now we can see that when a person is suffering from chronic disease it will actually ultimately lead to what lead to poor health because it will not only affect that person but also his family members okay so it is not only restricted to the individual health in chronic disease but in acute disease this is not the case because the person will recover from the disease very soon within a few days okay so now i think it is clear to you okay what is the difference between chronic and acute disease and how you know chronic disease have a long drastic effect on us is it clear okay now we will discuss another topic here in my today's class that is causes of diseases what are the different causes of diseases now if i ask you what are the causes of diseases or what is the cause of disease of a particular disease then you can give me one answer i'm sure that the main cause of the disease are what the germs the pathogens what are pathogens the disease causing germs are known as pathogen but now we will see we will discuss here that it is not only the pathogen pathogen or the germs this is only one level of cause of disease but there are many levels of cause of disease so now we will discuss this now 
Now see, in your textbook, okay, they, are, they have given one example and we can explain the different levels of cause of disease by taking this example. They have given, if there is a baby suffering from loose motion, okay, and if we try to find out the cause for this body disturbance, then the cause which will come to our mind will be what? Will be infection. The baby is having some infection. So, what is happening? That the baby is suffering from loose motion. So, the first level of cause for loose motion for that particular baby will be what? Will be infection. Keep in mind, that is the first level of infection. But the next question which will arise in our mind that why only that particular baby is having loose motion, not others? Why only that particular baby is having loose motion? Why not the other babies? So the answer to this question we can give is that what? Maybe the baby is not healthy. Because healthy babies will have less risk of suffering from diseases. And unhealthy babies will have more risk of suffering from diseases. So when that particular baby is suffering from loose motion, that means we can give one reason that maybe the baby is not healthy. <clears throat> Again, another question will arise that is, why only that baby is not healthy? Why only that particular baby is not healthy, but others are healthy? At this point, we can think that maybe the food which the baby is receiving is not good or not nutritious. Okay, so why that particular baby is unhealthy and suffering from loose motion? The reason we can give here that maybe the baby is not receiving good food. The baby is not receiving good nutritious food. So, here lack of good nourishment becomes a second cause of the disease. Okay, so what is the second cause of the disease? That is lack of nourishment, good nourishment. And what was the first cause of the disease? Infection, remember. So lack of good nutritious food is now becoming the second cause of the disease. Again, we can think that non-availability of good food may be because that the family may be poor. So that particular baby is unhealthy, unable to get good food, nutritious food. Why? Maybe because the family is poor, not having enough money to buy good quality food. So, the baby is having poor health and suffering from loose motion. Is it clear? On the other hand, it may also happen or it is also possible that the baby has some genetic defects. Now, this particular word, genetic, you will have to know. Now, genetic means related to what? Related to genes. So, some of you have this idea that what are genes? Genes are what? They carry 
some information okay from parents to the offspring and these genes you know they carry all the information for development of organs organ systems right in the embryonic stage and how the organ systems are going to function after birth okay so here one thing we can say that the baby is suffering from loose motion maybe that because of some genetic defects so when the baby is having genetic defects even after receiving good food even after receiving good quality food okay the baby will suffer from disease especially when exposed to pathogen the disease causing germs so that means here we can say that if even if the baby is healthy getting good nutritious food or nourishment then also the baby may suffer from loose motion why there may be some genetic defects is it clear okay now here the genetic difference or poor nourishment alone will not lead to loose motion okay that is we can say that pathogen is also playing one important role that means we can say that without pathogen the genetic difference or poor nourishment will not lead to loose motion so pathogen that is the disease causing germs you know they are responsible for disease without pathogen poor nourishment okay genetic difference will not be able to cause the particular disease okay so this genetic difference or poor nourishment now can be considered as what contributory cause okay these lines are important you will read it line by line in your textbook okay so these two genetic difference poor nourishment can be considered as what contributory cause okay now if we say that pathogen are responsible for loose motion how this pathogen will enter our body we can think maybe through drinking water maybe the pathogen is entering that particular baby who is suffering from loose motion through drinking water again the question will arise why there was no supply of good drinking water for you know that particular baby why why there was no supply of good drinking water okay and because of which the germ has entered the body of the baby and the baby suffer from loose motion so we can say here that it may be due to what it may be because of the public services maybe the public services are poor they are not taking care of the supply of good drinking water so now we can also say that poverty and lack of public services become third cause of the baby's disease so what what are the third cause one is poverty 
non availability of enough money to buy good quality food and also we can say that lack of public services they are the third cause of the baby's disease okay so from this discussion i think now it is clear or we can say here that most diseases will have many causes one single cause is not responsible for the occurrence of a particular type of disease okay there will be many causes not only one cause and also you will find that all diseases will have some immediate cause and some contributory cause so in my today's class what i have discussed let me summarize what do you mean by symptoms what do you mean by acute and chronic disease what are the differences between these two how chronic diseases lead to poor health and what are the various levels of causes of disease okay so with this i conclude my class thank you